10 footer is in. A big time bucket from Dane Goodwin. Pump fakes now, he's going to drive down the lane, up to the rim, and lays it home. Great move by Leshevsky. Feet ahead, moving, catches, fakes it in, and one. Over to Starling, 12 to shoot. Oh, he gets the corner. Dribbles towards the middle, crossover, step back, 25. Footer is pure. Oh, Trey Wirtz. Now he picks up the dribble, over to Goodwin, back to Ryan. Oh, he wants another one. Give it to him! All day, baby! All night! Cormac Ryan is unconscious! He's got flames coming out of his hands! Welcome to this week's edition of The Mike Bray Show, presented by Tyrac.com. I'm your host, Tony Simeone, and this is a special edition to wrap up this season. Of course, the head coach, Mike Bray, joined us for his final show last week after 23 seasons with the team. So this week, as we get a chance to look back and reflect, we're going to look back at some of the best moments from this show. We'll have a chance to look at old interviews, look at some plays of the past, and really dive into what's been a great run for head coach Mike Bray, not just with Inside Notre Dame men's basketball, but of course with his radio show as well. In this seat, it's been a pleasure to talk to Coach Bray every week for the last two years. Of course, if you're familiar with this show, you saw Jack Nolan, the longtime voice of Irish basketball in this seat, enjoy it as well. Of course, Notre Dame men's basketball is in the process of identifying their new coach, and that coach will sit with us next season when we come back. But for now, we're going to send you to a special edition on the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireRack.com, right after this. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireRack.com. It's been great to have you with us for this special show, and we're now going to get a chance to look back at a special segment from earlier. I've been in love with two coaching jobs in my five years as a head coach, and that's Notre Dame twice, and I'm happy I'm here. Notre Dame, Coach Mike Bray and the Irish, their first NCAA bid since 1990. The abiding Irish of Notre Dame are headed for Anaheim, California, and the Sweet 16. Aaron Cody for the dunk. That is their school record and the longest active home court winning streak in the country. Notre Dame has upset the second-ranked team in the country. As number one goes down, Syracuse undefeated no more. I'm just thrilled, man. I'm, I'm thrilled. For this group. That's going to do it. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish have won the NCC Tournament Championship, defeating North Carolina 90 to 82. They will take on the winner between Kentucky and West Virginia. What do you have to say about the way he was able to keep this team moving forward? Unbelievable. Best coach in America. Hayes dribbling, loses the ball. Jackson lays it up and in. It's over for the second time in a row. Notre Dame's going to the Elite Eight. And the Irish come back from 16 down in the second half and win the Maui Chin Maui Invitation. I am so honored to pass Coach Phelps, who's a good friend and has been a mentor. Not no good. Atkinson, put back. Happy St. Patrick's Day, baby! You're the Notre Dame basketball coach. That's a hell of an honor for 23 years. Trotting in here, trying to put the lead on us, put the tournament on us. Got it. Want to hit 15 threes on us. It's not happening. That's not happening. And there's a lot, of course, swirling around this game with all the stuff on the periphery, but there is just a tremendous amount on the line for Pittsburgh tonight. Do not expect them to take it easy on Notre Dame as they try to send Mike Bray out on a high note. Far block, good win, one on one in the paint. Pumps fake up off the glass and good. Then drops it off down low, and the ball's batted away and stolen. Plenty of time, sends it straight away. Ryan's wide open, 4-3, you bet. 
Cormac Ryan has a couple of threes early, and the Irish lead 10-7. Huffing steps inside the arc, 15-footer is up and in. They don't want to pass. Who don't stand? Let them prove tonight that they want to pass the ball. Somebody stun it, they turn it over. They got a deflection. Hinson backing down Wurtz. Almost traveled. It's tipped. And a steal. Elliott accelerates down the lane. Out of control, Burton saves it, hits it straight away, open three, good look, did not go. Those are the second chance, those empty possessions. Burton's almost trapped, now it's Ryan, leaning in, not there, gets his own rebound, Words the three, good. Back to Burton, he'll drive, the layup rims out, Lushevsky has it, up ahead to Words. Drops it off, Ryan! The emphatic finish! Mike Bray leaves South Bend a winner in his final home game. The Irish deliver with an 88-81 win against a top 25 pit team. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireRack.com. Got a special guest today. We're joined by associate head coach Anthony Solomon. Coach, I appreciate you sitting down. We're kind of reflecting on Coach Bray's career here. I know you're very close with Coach Bray. What about Mike Bray and Notre Dame? Had you coming back three times? Well, you know, I learned uh, early in my tenure uh, in the profession about trying to find your fit. And the word excellence, I learned that when I went to college uh, mm -hmm. as a young young kid, actually a freshman at the University of Virginia. And the word that always came about was excellence. And in speaking to Coach, uh, I knew his background enough too. Him coming from Duke was at Delaware, saw the work he had done there. Uh, he was at um, DeMantha High School, one of the most popular high schools and most productive with the legendary coach uh, Wooden. Yeah. So um, I knew enough about him and I was ecstatic to come here. That summer when it became available, um, I didn't hesitate mm -hmm. um, to make my interest known to him that um, I thought the mission uh, of the university in terms of certainly we're gonna go for championships, but also the mission overall in terms of the academics, the network um, was always important to me, my family, in terms of longevity. Mm -hmm. And um, it's proven to be so. Um, Certainly three different stints is kind of unheard of in the profession, but I think that says a lot. Um, you know, that first season, um, we walked into a great group of young people. Um, also, we made the best of it. Um, the program at that time had not participated uh, in the NCAA tournament for up to, uh, I think it's right around 10 years yeah, or a decade. decade. Yeah. And um, that first year, uh, was one to remember. Uh, a couple of special moments. Probably early in the season, we found we played maybe four or five games at home, and we went to a neutral site. We played the University of Cincinnati in Indianapolis. Okay. And that day, it was a big game. Cincinnati was good. Well, was Kenyon Martin or is it after Kenyon Martin? Maybe a year um, or two. I, there might have been some overlap okay. in there. Okay. okay? But it's um, good Cincinnati, yeah. though. <laughs> it was a very good Cincinnati. Yeah. Coach Huggins yeah. was coaching. And uh, here we are. Uh, you know, we're in the Big East at that time. But we're playing Cincinnati on a Saturday afternoon. And we have Troy Murphy mm -hmm. and David Graves, Matt Carroll, Swanee, and all these guys. And here we are. We're playing them. And we run this action that we call five. And um, it's a screen across, guard on big screen across. Well, Troy Murphy rejected the screen Instead of going across the post up, he sprints up to the top and shoots a three ball. 
he knocked that shot down. When he knocked that shot down, I'm sitting on the bench and said, we got something here. Mm -hmm. We got a chance. Because, I mean, prove it. he's a pro, but also we had great team chemistry. We answered the bell that afternoon and we got it done. And then, as we all know, in the Big East at that time, we were 2001 uh, Big East champions. We won the regular season back in my home state um, at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. And um, we cut the nets down on the road that day uh, with another game to be played. We went to uh, Connecticut after that, but we won the Big East Championship uh, outright uh, on that Saturday afternoon in Blacksburg. We'll be back with more on the Mike Bray Show right after this. I want to ask you about Coach Bray and your relationship, but specifically about maybe what's a trait? I mean, you've been around him now for at least periodically, as we talked about, over two decades. You've seen him coach. You mentioned 2000 and 2001 when you guys got started here. What's maybe the single trait when you look at Coach Bray that you admire the most or try to emulate or really just think is is kind of the key to his success? When you, when you explain someone why Coach Bray's had the success he has, what's the thing that comes to mind? Well, I think he really has connected with the young people. Mm -hmm. I think that's been really important. And then on the basketball piece, uh, the offensive side of the game. Um, I think he really allowed young people to be themselves offensively, but also I think he was at a place where he found a style of play mm -hmm. that was attractive for Notre Dame basketball and is shooting the basketball. All kids want to shoot. But everyone can't shoot, but we found the right ones that could shoot. <laughs> and, um, a tough needle to thread yeah, sometimes. Right. But um, I think he always comforted those um, that had skills. Yeah. And I think that's something that we got to continue to always carry on. You know, at the end of the game today, the, the game is to put the ball in the bucket. But you notice I took multiple sabbaticals. There were five-year sabbaticals. Mm -hmm. So I come back and I keep talking to him playing devil's advocate about defense too. Mm -hmm. So we got to play both sides and it's a two-way thing. But his connectivity and valuing, uh, growing and allowing young people um, to be themselves while holding them accountable, but also keeping them comfortable enough that they can be themselves mm -hmm. and learn um, in and around the game at a young time of their lives. Last one I have for you is just kind of about Coach Bray away from basketball. Obviously his time here at Notre Dame is coming to an end, so you guys will not coach together here at Notre Dame. So these memories now are gonna be in the past. You of course, I imagine, have a great relationship off the court. Now that it's gonna be no Notre Dame hoops for you guys, I imagine that part of the relationship might take more of a, a center stage with you guys. Just what are you looking forward to with Coach Bray now beyond Notre Dame hoops? What will it give you a chance to do and connect? Well, I think um, he's a big storyteller. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there'll be a lot of reflecting going on um, with the things that we were able to accomplish here because um, I know he may not have shown it as much as I do, but uh, he, he knew how I ticked. Um, you know, Notre Dame basketball has been important, very important to each of us. Mm -hmm. And um, the spirit of Notre Dame, the university, Notre Dame football is how a lot of people want to reflect on it. But we sort of took it personal that while we had a great university, very well known for football, however, we're going to uh, utilize that spirit of football to help us grow the basketball program. We love those Saturday afternoons mm -hmm. and those weekends where we got football, but we bring recruits in. And then on top of it, we can play basketball also. Mm -hmm. And the style I go back to in terms of offensively, how we play, how we spread the floor, um, it became really exciting. And um, we kind of found ourselves competing in our own way. Like when the lights come on, let us answer the bell that we can hoop here mm -hmm. at Notre Dame as well. And um, a lot of great moments. You know, we spoke about the first year being at um, Virginia Tech and winning the Big East Championship. And then how about we go to the ACC in 14? Mm. And then the second year, yep. um, we win the ACC Championship in Greensboro. And we all know who we beat on Friday mm -hmm. night. And then 24 hours later, we cut down the nets uh, against North Carolina. And um, doing that stretch, it was back-to-back -back Elite Eight. So you're talking about reflecting, because winning's hard. Yep. And um, 
we were able to maintain a certain level of consistency. And that's probably the ultimate that, you know, it's one time to be um, spotty with it, but in terms of a level of consistency, of success, which he was able to accomplish here, and, you know, my hat's off to him. There's a lot uh, of coaches in this profession for years that would always compliment uh, him and us in terms of the level of consistency of success at the University of Notre Dame with the men's basketball program. Coach, appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Tony. Welcome back to this special edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. It's been great to have you with us for this special show, and we're now going to get a chance to look back at a special segment from earlier. All right, Coach, this is against Georgia Tech, second half. I just wanted you to talk me through your offensive half-court execution. It's going to result in an easy basket. You guys really run this well. Yeah, you know, we're executing here. We're in our motion, and we get ball reversal, and we do a great job of coming back to this side and kind of fade screening really good action and end up getting a layup. You know, when we've run our motion and been able to run it and reverse it like that, we do have really high basketball IQ guys. And Cormac really calls this out. And then we get it, we wait on it, and just a great delivery and a layup at a key time. This is, to me, where I see is single-double. You can send Cormac either way. I think of J.J. Redick against Duke. You put one guy on one side, right. send him a double one way. He can go either way, right? And he picks his spot and finds the open three. Either way, and we run this single-double. We run it as a set for Dane a lot of times yeah. offensively. So it's kind of a choice here. And he leaves a little early. Hmm. You know, we wanted him to wait for Marcus to get down there. He leaves a little early. He's a little anxious. And he even gives his guy a shove a little bit, which is a veteran. All right, Coach, we're going to talk about J.J. Starling again because I think this is where he can be his most dynamic in transition, kind of takes advantage of Louisville as they're getting back on defense. You know, uh, early offense for him and being able to drive and slice, good ball screen by Nate, and he does a fabulous job splitting it and finishing. He is, you know, he's he's our best guard finisher. He may be our best finisher <laughs> overall. So we, we want him, when he's got a, an opening, to kind of go for it, and that's really – that's such a high skill level to be able to do that. Again, his overall demeanor and confidence was was rolling, and it's neat to see. And uh, I, again, I think it was because he was engaged on the defensive end and was defensive rebounding. When he's in there fighting for rebounds, it makes him more physical on the offensive end, too. Let me ask you this, too, because I saw it from the high angle. This is where your team, I think, can be at its most dangerous because you've got four shooters out there with J.J. There's nobody in the painted area here. Everybody that he can give the ball to here, whether it's Nate Popping or these three other guys around the arc, is a threat to shoot, and that's what opens everything up, right? We call that, we always say, fix the floor. Fix mm. the floor, which is get to those spots and space it. And you're right, usually we always have a threat out there. And so our spacing is pretty good and we're able to get in there. But, you know, we've got great spacing by the three of them. Nate kind of steps back and, you know, JJ, when he squares these shoulders with this strength, whew, I mean, that's just, you know, beautiful to watch. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. It's now time to wrap up this week and this season of this show. We really appreciate you watching all season long. Of course, it was great to look back at some of the best moments in this look back at Mike Bray's time on Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. The next time you see this show, there will be a new coach with Notre Dame, and I'm excited to sit down with whoever that may be. So until then, Tony Simeone saying so long. We've enjoyed having you on this season for the Mike Bray Show presented by TireRack.com.